Celebrating 42 seasons on the air, Farm Week is a production of Mississippi State University Extension. Today on Farm Week, it's Back to the Farm, a three-part feature about one family's decision to move away from the city back to their roots in the country. Who steps in to help when long-term farm owners retire? And what about the kids? They'll have to learn a whole new way of life. Meet Joni, Zach, Colby, and Lucy, a family that a year ago said goodbye city, hello farm life. Farm Week starts right now. Hello everybody, I'm Mike Russell. Thanks for joining me today on Farm Week. We have an interesting show for you today. For those of you who perhaps have pondered the idea of moving to the country, today's program might be a little food for thought, so let's get to it. After the last couple of years, the trends in farming are undeniable. Farm income down, the number of farms down dramatically in recent years. It's inescapable. Original farm owners are older. Far fewer people are living on farms than a century ago. So who's to take over as farmers look ahead into their sunset years? Today, a story of revival, at least for one family in Kansas. While some have left, others are returning, a conduit from the past to the future. Across the rural landscape of the United States, the number of people making small towns their home has been shrinking in recent years. An aging population, along with technological advances in agriculture, have contributed to the decline of the family farm as we know it. According to the USDA, the average age of a U.S. farmer is 68. Many of those who have spent a lifetime working the land are retiring without anyone in place to step up and fill the void. On a sprawling farm in central Kansas, one family is working to buck that trend, trading in a comfortable urban life for a rural one that promises hard work, long days, and a chance to grow a life steeped in long-standing traditions. Joni M. Reminders grew up outside a small rural town in central Kansas, where her family has been farming for three generations. After graduating high school in 1997, Joni set her sights on a life closer to the city. After earning a dental hygienist degree, she spent the better part of two decades working and raising three children with her husband, Zach, in Des Moines, Iowa. Visits back to the farm brought on a sense of fondness for rural life and the many lessons she learned as a child. We both have farming backgrounds, and we have always um, wanted to raise our kids in the same environment that we were raised. During trips back home, the future of the farm became a frequent conversation. And Reminder's grandfather, John Young, is 88 years old. Her uncle Greg and father Alan are closer to retirement age, and the next generation to run the farm was nowhere in sight. When we went back for Christmas this last year, yeah, <laughs> um, my grandpa said, it's time for somebody to come in and help, and, and it's got to be you. And Reminders is now embarking on a journey to work alongside her grandfather, her father, and her uncle. The trip home goes beyond helping the generation that came before. It's also about training the next generation that she brings with her. And Reminders' son, Colby, has always shown a strong interest in farming. Her plan is to be the conduit for his future on the farm. That's my happy place down there, and it's really cool because, you know, we're gonna be around family that we haven't been around lately. I just kind of expect that it's gonna, that we're gonna get this done, and we're gonna be happy down there. That's on the guides on the sickle. When Joni's grandfather started farming 60 years ago, the home place was a mere fraction of what it is today. The farm is now a mixed crop and livestock operation with around 150 head of cattle and roughly 3,000 acres of row crops. I had a really burning desire to farm, but I didn't have much of a start there. The equipment back in that time, this was after World War II, was old and decrepit, and uh, the finances were about the same way. And it was very difficult to, uh, for 
a poor boy that didn't have any money to buy land, and the competition to rent ground, as it always is, was very intense. So it was a slow process to put it together. That slow process would involve the help of Young's two sons, Alan and Greg, who have worked with their dad as partners since the operation was put into a trust just over two decades ago. Coming back to the farm has presented a long list of challenges. Both Joni and Zach are leaving successful careers in Des Moines, and their children are being uprooted from an established routine. Them making that decision helped us make that decision to move forward. So, and this, like Joni said before, it's really for the kids. So if that opportunity is what they want to be able to do, which Colby, that's his main focus. So if that's what they want to do, at least that opportunity is there for them when they get older. So what do you think them are, about 7 sixteenths? Once on the farm, the couple faces a steep learning curve, catching up on how farming has changed in recent years. It's definitely overwhelming. Just thinking about the fact that I have to learn to do what my grandpa does, who's been doing it for his entire life, is scary. A little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking, it's been, you know, pushing almost 17 to 18 years since I was actually working on a farm. So it's been a while. So there's a lot of things you got to remember. And, you know, sometimes it's the simplest things you got to remember you don't remember. So, but it's coming back and it's an enjoyable process. This life-changing journey for the minders is grounded in values taught through a rural upbringing. All I can do is to give them an opportunity. I can't guarantee their success, so it'll be up to them. And uh, you have to like this business, you know, <laughs> or, or be crazy, one or the other. But if you like it, you're gonna make that last trip to take care of livestock at night and the first one in the morning. And you're gonna stay out there to harvest the crop when the lightning's flashing and it might rain and ruin the crop that night. And all those things go with it. The future for the young farmers involves building on that base to create a place for their children, as well as keeping the family operation alive. There's the kids, but then there's um, my grandpa and that whole aspect, and that's, that's why we're going back to is so that we can hopefully make it continue to be everything that he built and wanted it to be. That was John Torpy reporting. We'll have parts two and three of Back to the Farm coming up, but first as we edge further into springtime and baseball season, you don't want to go extra innings in the garden, especially on hot days. On the other hand, if you're on the farm team, you may wind up making a basket catch or two on your way to a round tripper. Here's Gary Pockman with an explanation. popular but old-time plant is Boston fern, and it's no wonder with the lush and lacy bright green foliage. But did you know that there's other types of ferns? Let's take a look at some. Fern baskets will thrive in our Mississippi landscapes as long as they are kept in partial to full shade. Oddly enough, asparagus fern is not actually a fern and is really a member of the lily family. Lush stems of dense, linear, needle-like foliage cascade down from this hanging basket. This is a fast-growing, easy-care basket plant. Sword fern is commonly called Kimberly Queen fern and is gorgeous with both upright and sprawling growth habits. This fern has lush, sword-shaped fronds. The leathery and toothed dark green foliage provides great texture. This is a great choice for our hot and humid summers. Living up to its name, macho fern is a tough, rumble and tumble fern. The long, arching branches feature wide, dark green fronds that have a much coarser texture than many other ferns. And finally, the popular Boston fern is perhaps the most common fern for hanging baskets. The graceful and arching branches are lush with a rich green color. Growing up to three feet by three feet, this plant makes a statement hanging on the porch. 
these ferns love consistent root zone moisture, a watering can with a long spout is an easy way to water them. I'm horticulturist Gary Bachman, and I'll see you next time on Southern Gardening. Plant them, and they will grow. Now part two of our story of family moving to the farm instead of the other way around. They're living a whole new life, and it's all in a day's work for those on the front lines. Once again, here's John Torby. Earlier this year, Joni Embry Minders returned to the place which she called home nearly two decades ago. At the request of her grandfather, John Young, Embry Minders brought her family back to the farm in Burton, Kansas, and got right to work, hitting the ground running with a big smile on her face. My heart is, this is home. And um, I'm surprised at how, uh, how hard that hit me. In mid-June of 2018, weed harvest was underway when Joni, Zach, and their children moved back to the small Kansas town of 874. Young Farms endured its share of dealing with Murphy's Law as things that could go wrong did. Mechanical problems plagued the operation during harvest. A long summer drought slowed the growth of their dryland crops when rain finally arrived, it fell until just days before the start of harvest. The storms delivered all of Burton's annual rainfall in just 30 days. And reminders took all the problems in stride and embraced the steep learning curve. There's so much to learn. I've kind of put myself in a submersion program with everything I read, absolutely everything I possibly can, everything that grandpa tells me to look at or um, the guys that he listens to or reads their articles and things like that, I've tried to read, get, read everything I can get my hands on. Some of it makes sense, some of it doesn't, but I figure if I just submerge myself in the information, at some point I'll have a conversation with somebody that's going to make it all click. Amber Reminders yeah. continues to tap her grandfather's knowledge base. She relies on his years of experience to help navigate issues both on and off the farm. When I started this procedure the first of the year, I didn't know we were going to become involved in a trade war, which is making it more difficult. There's going to be problems, you know, in any business. So I think that you know, I'm continuing to try to, to uh, transfer anything that I might have learned in, in my entire life to her, and she's very receptive. She's just uh, very enthused about the entire thing, which uh, I'm happy about. I've got a lot of personal drive, and my whys are huge for this operation, and so it makes it um, it makes it fun and easy. I'm interested. I want I want to learn more. Joni and Zach Minder's drive to move back to the farm was fueled by a longing for their children to have the same chances they had growing up. Lucy and Colby have settled in to the Burton Unified School District, which has a smaller student body than the one they were used to in Des Moines, Iowa. The kids are learning a smaller student body creates countless opportunities. If someone comes in, everyone's accepted here because, I mean, it's just such a small school that everyone knows everyone. I think that when somebody comes, then they're like, hey, and they just welcome. Kids here, well, first of all, they're not going to fall through the cracks. We're going to know all, you know, we're going to know all about them um, very quickly. And um, yeah, kids in Burton, um, if you're standing upright, can take a good breath, can play basketball, football, volleyball, run cross country, uh, be the president of their class, be part of the K Club, which is Kansas Association for Youth. You can do FCCLA, uh, 4A, you name it. A lot of opportunity for kids here. Dwindling populations are a common thread across rural America. Younger generations are leaving the farm to seek new prospects in larger population centers. Coupled with advancements in farm technology, the number of family-owned farms are becoming few and far between on the rural landscape. What's going to happen to all these farmsteads? Because people aren't moving out here. They're moving into town or leaving and not coming back. 
what's going to happen to all this out here. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, Burton, Kansas has lost 6% of its population since 2000, making Joni's journey back to the family farm a unique move in rural America. It's been nice because uh, I don't get welcome home or welcome to Kansas or anything like that. What I get is, we are so glad you're here. The, the fact that we're coming back to continue something that's been set for a long time is, I think, appreciated in the community. For M Reminders, every day is a good one. Despite any hurdles the day may bring, she notes that with every sunset, she has no regrets about her family's move to rural America. This is a faith journey, 100%. I've prayed about this more than I have prayed about anything in my whole life. And I can tell you that there is no question in my mind that things are not going to work out. I think that it's... Um, it's not going to be easy. And there's going to be hurdles. There's going to be stumbling blocks. There's going to be people that let you down. There's going to be all of that. And it's all going to be OK. Well, then we need to put the new sweep in. I'll call Dad. Um, I am closer to my grandpa now than I have been my whole life. And he's an amazing man. And I'm really honored to get to learn from him in this setting. We'll take a break right here, but don't go away. Coming up on our final Farm Week feature, the conclusion of Back to the Farm, our three-part feature about one family's decision to move away from the city back to their roots in the country. The Minders family stepped in to help when Joni's grandfather neared retirement, but things are different in rural America these days. When Joni, Zach, Colby, and Lucy got to Kansas, there weren't quite as many people in town to welcome them home. That's coming up. Don't go away. It's a simple idea. Knowledge that transforms lives shouldn't be limited to those on a campus, but extended to any and all who want or need it, wherever they are. At Mississippi State University, we've been making that possible for more than 100 years through the MSU Extension Service. What began as an effort to extend the latest research to farmers has become something much more. Today, we're helping Mississippians from all walks of life, giving them the tools they need to build a brighter future. We're sparking the imagination of students around the state and inspiring the next generation of doctors. We're helping rural communities find their way to the internet and connect to the world at large. And we're teaching families how to lead healthier lives in ways both big and small. MSU is standing firm in its commitment to that one simple idea. Extend the knowledge that transforms lives wherever they are. ATVs are a ton of fun for people of all ages, but these powerful machines can also be a ton of trouble if safety guidelines aren't followed. Always wear a regulation helmet, gloves, and goggles when operating a four-wheeler. Long sleeves, pants, and over-the-ankle boots are also smart protection. Mississippi law requires approved ATV safety training for all operators who don't have a driver's license. This message brought to you by MSU Extension 4-H. Well, giving up city life to go back home to the farm may sound like a movie plot, but for the Minders family, though, it certainly has become a reality. Our three-part feature continues with the now Kansas family adjusting to life back where wheat fields dot the landscape. Bearing? What's that? Bearing? It's, it's, it's just being adaptive. So it's a change. It's a huge change. For Zach Minders, his return to the farm brought with it a mountain of work. Almost a year ago, Minders and his wife, Joni Embry Minders, moved back to rural Kansas to help operate the Young Farm, an operation that has been in Joni's family for three generations. 
it's called just trying to stay ahead of the game because if you're not trying to stay ahead, you're gonna fall behind. And as soon as you fall behind, then you got five things that just piled up behind you. You just keep moving forward. If you don't, you're gonna fall behind. For the Embry Minders family, the move from Des Moines, Iowa to Burton, Kansas was all about timing. Zach's help was needed most with harvest of not one, but three crops, making for a string of long days. I get home at, you know, 10 o'clock at night compared to getting home at 7.30. You know, don't have quite that time. I mean, I don't see the kids as much. That's definitely, it's, a no, it's, it's definitely known that I'm, I'm not seeing the kids very much because I have one little boy that goes, dad, 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 nonstop when I get home because he hasn't seen me. Joni Embry Minders grappled with her first harvest back on the farm in mid-2018, balancing paperwork and physical labor. She spent the first few months unloading grain carts and working 120 head of cattle with her son Colby. The new chores have inspired Colby to dream about being the fourth generation to work on the young farm. Close just a little bit. There you go, perfect. Embry Minder's family is happy she traded her dental hygienist scrubs for a pair of boots. The long hours working alongside family and personal devotion to the farm's operation have become part of her personal journey to rejuvenate rural roots on the home place. But I also like getting dirty and um, I like being out at the bends and I like being in the field and I love, I love the cattle. So it's, uh, it's all pretty enjoyable, but the best part is that it's, no matter what I do, I'm doing it for my family. Yeah. Don't even have to get the trailer Point out. direction. You might not even have to point. Right. <laughs> Probably knows. I re originally thought that she would be a good one to take over when Dad couldn't do the bookkeeping anymore. She could do that, you know, what she has agreed to do and stuff. But also, she was, I mean, a couple of days ago, I uh, was over the farm and, and she was in the truck with the gooseneck trailer ho ho uh, hooked on behind it, you know, and, and she was driving it and they were moving one group of cattle back over to the farm. While Zach, Joni, and their three children enjoy living in a rural setting, they know moving back to the farm is bucking the trend. According to data from the University of Kansas, the number of people living in Burton peaked in the 1980s at 976. The population has been in steady decline, impacting the town and its economy ever since. I think it's great that they're coming back. I think it's uh, maybe shows to our young people, our young couples, hey, you've got something here that you don't know. This is a little gem that somebody has noticed and seen and is coming back to uncover. And maybe you look at that gem all the time and you don't see it such a special thing anymore. Maybe it's lost its luster. Maybe you just need to, you know, shine it a little bit, you know. <laughs> Pastor Kim Andrews has served the congregation of the Pleasant Grove United Methodist Church for six years and has watched the number of parishioners filling the pews slowly dwindle. We've lost a lot of major important people here who were the grandmas and the grandpas and uh, that knit us together. And uh, so it's a time that the people who are here now need to decide, are we going to be now those folks for other people that are coming up? What she talks about in wanting to have a place for her family and for her kids to connect with the community and understanding she's been there, you know, she's seen that, she's lived that. And so what may still look kind of appealing to some folks here, she understands that maybe the grass is actually greener here for her and her family. That greener grass has lured many away from the south central Kansas town. Josh Derner, who is part of the second generation to operate the State Bank of Burton, elected to stay because he sees promise in the town's location. We're in a unique position in Burton. We're 15 minutes from Hutchinson, 45 minutes from Wichita. So we are kind of a community that commutes to work for the most part. Main Street has become a shell of bygone businesses and the street itself is in disrepair. 
The tax dollars available to fix the roads have been decreasing along with the population. We need more people to come back and take an ownership of the community. I mean, people that grew up here, that, that lived here, and they need for, the, for Burton not to dwindle off and, and disappear. We need more people to come back. The Embry Minders family is focused on farm and family as they approach the first anniversary in Burton. To make their return a successful one, the couple feels that embracing their community is key to their future in rural America. I'm all in. I'm here to do what my grandpa needs me to do and learn what he wants me to learn, but I'm also here to help them wherever I can. And at the end of the day, when I get ready for bed, I am so content. My heart is so happy here. My heart is so happy here. Certainly what keeps many farmers on the farm even these days when it's a tough business to be in. Next week, speaking of things that work against farmers and ranchers, it's a battle between ranchers and the federal government. In New Mexico, ranchers won a court case against the U.S. Forest Service, but they've been fenced out of some of their land in a battle over water rights. It's a tangled web of old laws and new regulations, a standoff between environmentalism and land use. That's next time on Farm Week. Remember, if you missed a story, look for past episodes of Farm Week on our website at farmweek.tv. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.